Let's call this meeting of the Operations Committee to order on September 9th. Uh, if we could all please stand. Oh, whoops, I see the out on board docs. The agenda is a little different. Let's approve the agenda first. I'll move we approve the agenda. I'll second that. All right. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That's three zero, Robin. Now we can stand for the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, 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 with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Thank you. Robin, do we have any public comments? No, sir. Okay. Um, the next item would be the approval of the August 12th minutes. Hold on, I'm moving them over. Do I need to scroll them? Please. Not for me. Okay. Let me know if I need to slow down or stop. Uh, did it say that I was absent from the from I was absent from the meeting? You were absent from the first two votes. Not from the meeting, just from the vote. You didn't. You weren't available at the the first two, or three. Yeah, I keep scrolling. Yep. Yes. Yes. You can. I'm on another screen. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Do I need to go back anywhere? No, I move we approve the minutes as presented. Second it. Okay, any discussion? All right, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Will? Um, I'm gonna vote against. Do you want to correct it? Uh, no, no thanks. I'm just, we got a lot of stuff to do today. No problem. It's not that, it's not that intense. Okay. All right, Robin, uh, two, one. Got it. <clears throat> okay, it takes us to the construction update. Rob, and, and uh, I heard you before we got started, and you're right, just for the sake of time, and also the fact that you give the board the full presentation anyhow. Um, we just go through any any non-green areas or cost issues that we should be aware of. Sure, and, and I guess if we could go ahead and just have Rob and scroll roll slowly through these, we're, we're not gonna do the video tours right now. Uh, May River, under budget, on schedule still, uh, green lights there, you'll see some progress photos. Keep them running, Robin. Uh, we do have some OSF dates there of interest. Uh, uh, River Ridge on budget, on schedule, uh, with uh, progress photos there. Uh, we do have an OSF final now scheduled for the 800 wing uh, October 15th. Uh, moves us into the summer 2020 updates. Uh, starting with the roofing projects, you can see that we finished the work at Bluffton Middle and Hilton Head Island Elementary. The others are close to finishing. Um, moving right along. Pause right here, Robin, for just a second so I can address the yellow flag that's on this page as well as a couple others. Uh, starting back a few months ago, if you recall, we started to inform uh, the operations committee as well as the clock and the board of some uh, 
technology infrastructure schedule concerns that had begun to surface back then. Uh, these stems, these concerns all stem from delays associated with the design of the various technology packages. Since that time, we've been able to progress the technology infrastructure designs and for at least one of our projects that was previously lighted as a yellow concern traffic light, it's now reporting as green. But as you'll go through this report, there are others that still remain with yellow traffic lights. Uh, we had developed a scheduled recovery plan for those and a lot of those were hinging on receiving 100% CDs for the remaining technology packages this week, September 8th. Um, due to some non-typical circumstances, those submittals were not received. So what we've got is projects that you'll see that are lit, lit up with yellow traffic lights. Our project managers, our CBRE HERI subconsultant, minority firm, AJT, is working hand in hand with the PMs, the designers and subconsultants to uh, execute a revised uh, schedule recovery plan. Uh, and once we receive those project uh, uh, remaining submittals, uh, we fully expect to be able to turn the projects back uh, from yellow to green. Uh, the key thing is, is that we continue to handle or hold month, uh, weekly meetings as well as closely monitoring the progress of uh, those technology infrastructure. And I will pause to see if there are any questions related to the technology infrastructure. Yes. Yes, I have a question. Mr. Dowling. Um, this has been the most consistent yellow that we've had for several months. Um, I would hope that by the time you come to give the board the full Monty on this presentation that you get a firm commitment date from who the contractor or subcontractor or whoever, uh, a firm commitment date as to when this problem will go green. I appreciate that comment, John. Uh, it is something that uh, we did address last week with our clock uh, monthly meeting, and we're actually trying to uh, provide them with some additional detail before this week is out. Um, the uh, uh, conversations have committed to a new deliverable date for a revised recovery plan, and as I said, if we can get the drawings by that date and time, uh, we'll be able to uh, be able to take these yellow lights and return them to green. Uh, and as I said, they, they were really extenuating circumstances that were non-typical. Uh, I hate it for anybody, but the subconsultant that is performing a good portion of those services uh, earlier this summer uh, had to deal with the death of his mother. And then just a few uh, weeks later, uh, he had to deal with the death of his father. So uh, it's been a tough situation okay. for them, but well, uh, sure. he's, back, he's sure. back at the helm. We believe he can get it across the finish line. We have clearly communicated that this concern has been ongoing for what we believe is an excessive time and it needs to be resolved. We think that it can be resolved. Um, and with the resolution, we'll be back on a recovery plan that can be executed. The key to keep in mind is, is that the other work, like the construction of the IT uh, closets, the new configurations associated with all of that, the contractors have uh, been able to execute the construction of those. It's just a matter of finalizing all of the various technology device locations so that uh, we can then take it to the street and get some hard bid numbers and off to the race as we go. But Just I did think it was important to pause, um, share it here. That way there you get the <laughs> full story and it'll allow me to keep moving through the rest of these. And if, yeah. are there any other questions when, related to that? Yes, yes, I have a follow up. Uh, when you say, you say that you will get, a, you have a firm date for a recovery plan. Uh, what, when are we gonna get a firm date for the plan being accomplished? Well, uh, by the end of this, uh, uh, this month, we should know that we have received those documents and with the receipt of those documents, we, we, we will be back in uh, good shape. 
So, so we okay. So, uh, eight eight September was the original due date. That was the revised uh, recovery date. But like I said, due to those extenuating circumstances, he he was not able to deliver those doc drawings uh, yesterday to us. And in holding conversations with the team. Uh, we feel comfortable committing that he can deliver these before the month's out. And I know that I have Thank said you. similar statements over the course of the past couple months, but uh, we believe this will be uh, an accurate forecast for receiving those remaining documents. Is this gating any other items? Pardon me? Is this gating any other items? No. Okay. Well, one, I have one question, Rob. Sure. Um, when would this yellow turn red? At the end of this month? Uh, if we don't have it by the end of this month, I think it's only appropriate that we uh, would turn it to red because uh, I think that uh, a scheduled recovery would be very, very difficult if it was to extend any further than that. And uh, by all means, uh, we have clearly communicated that this next date is a drop dead date. It must be held. Uh, the success of these projects hinges on them. Okay. Will, you, you all right? Uh <laughs> My question to uh, Mr. Ottinger would, would, would just be uh, when, when, at what point do he get involved and in, in, in the superintendent as well? Well, I'd say I'm involved with this already. I'm uh, monitoring it and participating as well. Um, as of right now, uh, the superintendent would need to get involved um, or even the board would get involved if we have a contractor that's not uh, cooperating in any way. In this case, this isn't the situation. It's a, uh, a circumstance, as Mr. Corbin mentioned. Unfortunately, in the middle of the summer, while we're working on this, there's a main subcontractor that's doing a lot of this work. His uh, father passed away, and then shortly after, a few weeks later, <coughs> his mother passed away. That really took him off our project for an extended period of time. And just because of that circumstance, now that we get beyond that, we should, and, and it's as you can understand, a little difficult for us to push in that circumstance as well. But now that we're getting beyond that, we can get back to normal. We can move this project forward. Um, all due respect, uh, you know, I have to be quite candid, you know, in, in every major company to do these contracts. Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Rob, can you tell me what's the amount of insurance that you have to have to do, to do these projects? Uh, I'm going to kick that over to Robert. He's more in tune with the okay. no problem. current Thank district you. requirements. I'd have to look them up to be specific with you, Mr. Okay. Uh, Smith, but uh, the, all Leave of our, the, the our designers required. are required to have uh, uh, appropriate insurance coverages. Our umbrella insurance, and Jennifer Staten's on here, so she can correct me if I go too far, he has uh, $2 million of overall umbrella insurance for a project. Right, correct. And, and, and that's what I was thinking. And, and I say that to say this, with, with a large company with that with that type of insurance, and to be a pretty uh, credible and reputable com company, it seemed like if they if one person is, is out of is out of the is out of is out of pocket, then it seemed like they should have a, a someone else to be able to further assist us when we're dealing with a, a school district of this magnitude. And uh, uh, the, the, the people's the district's money uh, of this magnitude be, you know, this is, this is not, um, it's not building my house or building my deck. You know, this is, this is a school, a school district and this is a business and not a friendship. So, you know, I, I do convey and I do understand the losing of, of parents and I can only fathom losing two, but to some degree the, the, the company and, and, and the spending of this, of the district's money ha has to be held to a standard of, of, um, Of, of, of right to the in the in the, in the eyes of, of the of, of the community, so someone still has to be held held accountable. So I just hope in the future that that we will hold people more more accountable, and we won't give them that much time as we've had now to a lot of things to lag to lag to lag our own. 
So that's just that's just my, my point. I just think that so there should have been someone second in command if there wasn't then that, that's a problem that's a problem within the company that that is not our job to correct, but it's our job to move on. Thank you. Just one more question. Go ahead, John. Um, all right. So we're we're three weeks ahead. Uh, well, we're three weeks away from a potential red. What what is the impact of it going red? What's the impact on the whole project, and what kicks in when it goes red to get it not back to yellow but to green? Well, uh, let, let's let's hope that our management of the situation over the course of the remaining weeks in this month prevent that from occurring. That is our goal. Uh, but if it does turn red, it would typically bring with it not only schedule concerns, but potentially some additional budget related concerns due to the delays of being able to execute that work uh, in the original time period that it was planned. So uh, uh, th th those are some definite risks that uh, we've identified. So is, it, is anybody working on a plan B to address that if it happens? I would say at this time, no, because we don't foresee that happening. Everything's got us going on the right track and our efforts at this time are to get us back on schedule and moving the projects forward. And I, Okay, I I'm just, play, I'm just yep. playing the resident skeptic here that, that, that it may, since it's been yellow for months, uh, I'm not overwhelmed with confidence that something else won't go wrong and that it may indeed go to red. And I hope that if it does go to red, the very first thing that you don't have to do is say, what do we do now? We should know now what we'll do if it goes red. Correct, we're okay. actually, yep, good point. Okay. All right, well, let me uh, go ahead then and carry on. Um, the uh, next slide here shows the work that's been completed at the turf field over at Buford High. Uh, the clock actually visited, uh, some of the members visited this site earlier today. Um, uh, track work is ongoing uh, still. That's some of that 8% work on that campus. Uh, here uh, for the next slide, uh, some of the work that's been completed there has been uh, highlighted with regards to the renovation of the IT area, the safety security improvements at Lady Island, and the painting at Ladies Island and Mossy Oaks. Um, some photos of the new admin security vestibule there at Ladies Island. Um, uh, work uh, at uh, these sites. Uh, the only thing that you've seen so far as we scroll through are the yellow lights that I spoke to on the uh, uh, technology infrastructure side of the equation. Um, next slide, we'll see the uh, new uh, football field that's been installed at Well Branch Early College High School. Um, Excuse me, quick question. Absolutely, Mr. Smith. When, when will the track at Beaver High School be completed? Uh, we were discussing that right now. Oh, we, I was out there earlier this morning. I think we're still probably three to four weeks out from getting the new rubberized surface put in. Uh, we are trying to work with the contractor as well as the uh, uh, football practices that are ongoing on that campus. But I think that's where we are as far as a time frame to get that finished and wrapped up. A few more weeks. Okay, so we're so we are within our time frame on that. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, work over at uh, Buford Elementary has been progressing on time and within budget. Um, you'll you'll see a photo right there. There's the new cooling tower on the left. The other cooling tower on the right will be replaced before the month's out. Uh, it's already arrived on the site. We've got the new uh, playground for the special needs program completed there. Um, coming up with the team of Jump Carter Cease and Beacon. Uh, playgrounds at Bluffton been completed, painting of the corridors uh, at Bluffton Middle, H.E. McCracken, as well as refurbishment of the mobiles at H.E. McCracken. Uh, there's more details on all these slides with the various uh, project level, but uh, 
Uh, this time I'm trying to cover this material a little quicker than I normally do. There's the playgrounds that occurred at Bluffton Elementary. Next slide, if you've been out to H.E. McCracken, uh, you see there on the right-hand side, the renovations have taken place to the locker rooms. What a great transition and improvement that has been. And then uh, the uh, left side shows the new uh, weight room renovations that have been completed. Um, for uh, this slide here, uh, once again, everything's moving, budget and schedule in green shape. Uh, work that's been completed, 8% at Hilton Head for the HVAC, playgrounds at Hilton Head Elementary, the HVAC upgrades and painting and restrooms. So we made a lot of progress this uh, summer. Uh, there's some of the photos of the completed work out at Hilton Head Island Elementary, the playground, the new turf. Um, next slide is uh, work in Hilton Head and o Okady and uh, Red Cedar. Uh, speed bumps been fin uh, completed, painting of the corridor, and the kilns have been installed out there at uh, Hilton Head School of Creative Arts. Uh, some more photos of completed work uh, at Hilton Head Island, the playground and turf again. Uh, for the Well Branch projects, uh, this project is a little bit further along with the uh, technology, but to sort of address the question that came up earlier, you know, trying to turn things back to green. We really believe that this is one that is so close to turning back to green, but because that we've been told that deliverables will occur and certain actions will occur, we, we thought it only prudent to keep these yellow until we receive the next uh, critical pieces which is our bidding in the early September. And once we have those IT packages bidded, we know that they're being awarded. These will be the first two that quickly go back to green. A uh, quick little update on our design projects. Still excuse making good me. Progress. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Yes, Mr. Downey. John. Um, you said that, yes. Yes, you said that we're going to get them in uh, middle of September. We're about two days away from middle of September. So is, is there been any chatter about them being on time or late? No, what we've <laughs> had is, is we've received the 100% the for the, there was three remaining technology packages for Well Branch uh, Elementary and Middle School. We've received mm -hmm. those. The, con the designers have addressed our comments. They're, they're so close to clearing the last ones that we feel confident that those IT packages will go out to bid here shortly. And once they go to bid, we'll be back on our recovery schedule. And uh, long story short, these two yellow lights that you see on this slide will go back to green. Okay, technology delivery is causing us angst of late. So I just want to make sure that we're focused like a laser beam on it. Oh, absolutely. And just for the benefit for everybody that's participating in this call, I think it's prudent also to share that as we deploy these new technology packages, we will run the existing package until the new one has been fully installed, tested and tried so that we can then make the transition quickly to the new system before we take anything offline. So we won't miss a beat as far as the day-to-day -day technology needs as they relate on each campus. Okay. Uh, quick little updates on the design projects. Uh, once again, Robert Smalls International Academy is well underway. It's still under budget on schedule. Uh, we've begun to uh, see a we've already seen a preliminary schematic design and the next formal submittal is the actual schematic design that's scheduled to occur this week by September 11th. Uh, we also have uh, selections that are taking place for our site construction or for our construction management at risk firms and uh, those are uh, scheduled to go as a recommendation to award to the board next week at September 15th board meeting. Uh, that would be for this project as well as for the next slide, which is Battery Creek High. Um, 
Battery Creek High, uh, you know, activities that are ongoing right now. A lot of field uh, data being collected because of the heavy renovations associated with that project. So uh, we uh, uh, have continued to see good progress there. And I have some more information that I'll share coming up. Uh, just as a reminder, we do continue to maintain and monitor our overall referendum uh, contingency. That log has been furnished as a material supplement to this material, this presentation. But it, the, the key here is nothing has changed over the last two meetings that I've prepared this information and shared it. Uh, so since August 12th, no changes have uh, occurred to that. Uh, quick little update on community outreach. Um, all of the websites uh, have been updated with the latest information uh, related to their projects uh, uh, earlier this week. Uh, at River Ridge, you'll see there that we have a ribbon cutting ceremony. Uh, sharing that date so that you can put that onto your calendars. It's Wednesday, September 23rd. Additional details will be uh, shared uh, here shortly for that ribbon cutting ceremony. And as follow up to our community input meetings, uh, we do have uh, our uh, first meeting scheduled for Battery Creek High. It'll be done through Zoom on September 17th at 6.30. Uh, and we, I shared last month uh, the uh, uh, community outreach and input meeting that was held at Robert Smalls. Uh, we are expecting to do one additional outreach uh, input meeting. Uh, we're still looking for a date to be firmed up, but that'll either be the last week of September or the first week of October for that uh, follow-up there. And I'm going to turn this over to Robert because this is some new information that's coming to the Operation Committee related to the CBRE HERI performance review. Uh, so uh, as Robin pulls up that material, I'm going to turn that over to Robert so that he can uh, go over uh, the, the salient points of that uh, review. Thank you, Rob. So just a brief history before we kind of go over the results. Um, this was brought, this has been brought to the operations committee, I'd say each of the last few times that we've met, uh, brought, you know, had some conversations about how to develop this evaluation tool. In the end, uh, we developed a survey and had conversations on who should receive the survey and uh, some of the other uh, standards that were used for this evaluation. The survey was, if you remember, is sent out. It was sent out to two principals currently having projects in their buildings that are working with Erie. It was sent out to uh, three of the clock, um, clock members that will be a rotating three. It was sent out to senior staff and then it was sent out to all three members of the operations committee. So hopefully you all received that and if you have any questions or comments on how that uh, survey question was sent out, please feel free to uh, let me know. So I guess I'll stop right there and see if you have any comments on the survey format itself. Right, hearing none, I will move on. Um, so if you look at uh, what Robin has on the screen, we went through the green, yellow, and red light uh, format that we've used in the past. One of the things in setting this up, we kept our scoring criteria the same, but we did realize that it may not reflect well the act using the colors as we had indicated. Um, so example will be the, um, the, the first one. Well, let me get, uh, the first one isn't actually a question on a survey. The first one has to do with uh, just their staffing schedule. Again, here there's 74% of the hours that they had planned to use, but this, which puts them in a yellow based on the criteria of being between 70 to 90% of their planned hours. But do recognize uh, here he is working on an hourly rate, so they're only paid for the hours they worked. So what you see on the next item, number two, reflects that. So of the budgeted amount that we had for this year, so far we've only spent 60% of that budget amount, which puts them well into the green. 
Um, so in other words, we have not been using uh, as many staff hours as projected, but we have also not been paying for near as many staff hours as projected and such the green light under the budget. Going on to the, the question C, you see a green light having to do with experts added to the team. Um, that's a, just a review of the resumes of the team members being provided. Uh, the next item is professionalism. This did come from the survey, again, a green light. Uh, relationship with the district comes from survey results, again, a green light. MWBE participation, of course, that is a, a review of their staffing hours and what percentage of those are MWBE firms. As you see, as of right now, uh, they have 38% MWBE, which exceeds the district's goal of 20%. So the next one, community involvement, had a score of four, which was a yellow light based on the scoring criteria we had. Um, all of the questions on the survey, you either agreed, uh, strongly agreed, or neutral, disagreed, or strongly disagreed. So one of the things that we found out after running this is that if you got a neutral score in there, that may be, or an NA, some people would say they had no experience, that's going to drop you in a lot of these cases down to that 4.0, which is a yellow on our current scoring criteria. So one of the things that we discussed at, uh, at our clock meeting that I'll let make you aware of and see if you have any comments is to simply change the yellow criteria to instead of being from 2.0 to 4.0, moving it to a 3.9 um, and then above a 4.0 and above would be green. What you'll find is a lot of these yellow lights with that slight change to the scoring criteria would move them to green. And I, and I do have to say that um, I don't think, in my personal opinion, and feel free to comment on this, if we do not receive at least one disagree or strongly disagree, I'm not sure that is a good indication of a yellow light. Because um, an NA or a non-applicable or a neither agree nor disagree um, does not necessarily indicate a concern. It may indicate no involvement. So I'll stop right there and, and see if any of the committee members <coughs> have any concern about that slight change to the scoring criteria. Um, you know, mathematically, you can take the NAs and... Uh, you know, no opinions mathematically, you can take them out of the calculation. That's the other. Yeah. You can do that with math. So, yep. but I don't want to go against the clock. You know, I'm, I'm going to defer to the clock if, if that's what they want. But, you know, you, you can eliminate those from the, from the divisor and you can come up with an accurate uh, reflection no. of the people that responded. No, I agree. And that is an option. I, I, one of the things I was trying to do is just take the scoring straight that was given up to us without manipulating in any way, just from Survey Monkey. And so um, another option would be as you suggested. And that's a good, good one. Any other comments? All right. Uh, managing schedule, uh, again, is up from the questionnaire is green. Uh, budget, questionnaire is green, dispute is green, safety, again, you got a 4.0 because we got some NAs or some neither agree nor disagree. Construction phasing, uh, green at a 4.5, quality control, same as the others is yellow. There were no disagrees or strongly disagrees, just NAs and uh, neither agree nor disagree. Uh, you see there, public opinion, there was no public opinion. You'll see that uh, clock opinion was 4.5. Do have to, uh, if you notice board opinion, there were no uh, surveys received from any of the board members. So um, I don't know if you have any comments or uh, any ways to improve that or any comments about that. Disappointing. <laughs> Disappointing. And you might want to bring that up when people have comments at Just, the board meetings. We'll just note that now the only board members that received this are the three operations committee members. Oh, okay. So I don't know, did y'all have, did you receive it? 
number one? Did you I filled it out. I filled it out and submitted it. So somehow Ooh. it got missed. Okay. Well, we will tell so there's something wrong. I'll investigate that. I John, did Will, did you do it? I, 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 did, I did too. Okay. Okay. So I well, let me, it may have come. Let me investigate that to find out what happened then. All right. Um, let's see. So moving no, on. Did I go too fast? No. Uh, so quality of information, again, green, standards, yellow. But of course, again, it was an NA or <coughs> either green or disagree. Management plan 4.2 and then website 4.33. So those were the scores that were received. Um, being that there were no uh, strongly disagrees or agree or strongly disagree or uh, disagree, it's pretty much close to all greens or very close to it. Um, so any comments you want to make about this format, the survey itself, or Heary's performance? I don't see any hands, Robert. I, I do have a question for Rob, though, if we're yes, done sir. with this. Um, what, what was what was the feedback from Clock on on the yellows that that we kind of focused on in this meeting? Uh, what was their feeling? My take on the conversation last week, David, was that uh, they believe that although they've seen the results, that just a minutia tweak in the scale was probably appropriate uh, to do. But as Robert said, we, uh, I think he wanted to come in and just present the data as it was received without doing any manipulation because so often when you begin to monitor and measure various activities, you need to see it as it comes back in to better understand if a refinement is necessary or not, and if it is, how and where to make right. it uh, take place. But I do believe that the clock chair and the clock members were all supportive of the fact that it came in without being manipulated. It was talked about openly and that I believe that they were receptive to some refinement. Now the yellows I was talking about, Rob, were the yellows in your, pre your presentation. Not in the not the performance, but you know the ones that we were focused on. Oh, you you went back to the yeah. uh, technology infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, th they share similar co concerns to the operation committee. Uh, they know that we've been reporting on this and trying to manage this situation. They're fully aware of what transpired with the sub consultant. Uh, uh, in addition to managing this and monitoring it very closely. Uh, I am trying to pull together some additional supportive information that I can get back to Ted Barber before the end of the week. Uh, Ted does not know yet because our meeting took place last week uh, that we have not received the submittals that were due on the 8th. Uh, so I think it's important for him to get the latest update because uh, next week Ted will be providing the board in its entirety a quarterly briefing from the clock. Uh, but uh, I think all in all, uh, the fact that uh, we, we went live with this uh, concern very early on uh, and we've tried to manage it to the best of our abilities. Uh, and, you know, I, I share the sentiment of your uh, members here that, you know, this is a business and it needs to be run as such. Uh, there should always be uh, a game plan so that if somebody was to uh, be away from the office that commitments are still honored. Um, the uh, sub consultant as Robert and I've shared, you know, he has had some uh, tough times to go through. Uh, he, d he is a smaller firm in comparison to some of the larger firms that perform design services. But once again, this is a specialty type of sub consultant uh, I, I know that the owner of the firm, when he was out dealing with the funerals, he was relying heavily on his second and third in charge back at the office. And, you know, you, you can trust, but only so far, and you have to then get to the point where you got to verify. And I think uh, as he was getting to that point of verifying the work that had been done in his absence, uh, I, I commend him for shooting 
everybody's straight. You know, one thing could have been, oh, everything's fine, let's put it on the street. And then we are dealing with a bunch of changes and additional costs as we try to resolve this during the construction phase. He didn't do that. He shot everybody straight. And I still think it's in the best interest yeah. of everybody to stay with the team that uh, is at hand and to receive a good quality set of documents that that will recover time in the future and also keep costs down. I just, I just wanted to see if we were in sync with the citizens committee. No, uh, you are, you are, and don't be surprised next week when Ted Barber, the chair, provides mm -hmm. his brief. I think Robert and I fully expect that he will spend a little bit of his brief on this topic of the yellow lights with the infrastructure and technology. Okay, okay. Yeah, just, if, he, if he doesn't, we will. Oh, uh, <laughs> he's he going to beat you to it, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, all right. You see Mr. Dowling's hand is up. Thank you. Oh. I Why just kept. I see that? <laughs> yeah, sorry, he does. Right. Physically raising it. Sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Dolly. Okay. I just have two quick comments. Number one, I'm glad that the clock is in sync with us uh, because it's foremost in my mind that we are the ones that are accountable to the community for the success of this pro project, these projects. So, I'm glad that they're, the advice they, they give is in concert with our take on things. Number two, one of my goals in the last few time, in the limited time that I have remaining on the board is to make sure that we never do business with somebody who does not have a backup, no matter where they are in the food chain. Okay, so just try to remember that when uh, we have to decipher what goes wrong or what's been delayed. I hope. I hope they can show that they had a backup because of a staff being out of action. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. I don't see any more hands. Um, thank you, Rob. Now, D D David, uh, if I may be so bold, the other thing that Robert and I wanted to bring to the operation committee's attention is uh, the overall cash flow on the referendum. Uh, we did not include any of the information in today's uh, presentation. If it is an interest going forward, I'll be glad to do so. Uh, but uh, over the past couple months, we have had some indications that the actual invoicing and pay apps that have been coming in have lagged the progress of the work that's been performed in the field. Um, and as we analyze that, we do that through a cash flow model that was originally prepared to anticipate how quickly the work would be put in place and what the cost would be invoiced on a monthly basis. Uh, we, we are monitoring that uh, as well very closely, and we are taking proactive steps on that front. We think it'd be very beneficial to retrain our CMs as well as our designers because we continue to receive uh, pay applications and invoices that are not appropriately uh, put together. They're missing backup documentation, et cetera. And when that occurs, we do have to pause and, get, and stop. We don't pay the, the invoice or the pay app. We go back to the vendor and have them straighten it out. The other thing that we think would be very much a return on the investment is to uh, develop and implement uh, checklists. Uh, that way there, these vendors and uh, contractors before submitting the invoice, they can use the same checklist that we would be using with our uh, review and approvals of the uh, pay applications. That way there, hopefully before it even leaves their office, if they're missing a piece of backup, It'll, these checklists will help them to identify that. So that will only help to expedite the processing of the uh, uh, invoices. Third, but not, uh, and, and last, one, one of the things that we're also looking to do is uh, develop a revised cash flow model that uh, not only will 
model the actual invoicing that's occurred through uh, the period to date, but uh, going forward, it should model uh, more realistically the monthly invoice totals that we anticipate. So uh, we are on top of that as well. I just wanted you to hear that from us because I would be surprised if the clock doesn't at least give a little bit of a brief on that because we have had uh, communications with them and they know that we are addressing it just like I shared with this team uh, by uh, going through those steps that I just shared. You used to give us a cash flow analysis, right? I it think used we to be, had maybe used to be one in there originally, and for yeah. whatever reason, it's sort of fallen by the wayside. I have no problem putting that back in if that's the desire of uh, your committee. Uh, just say the word, and back in it comes. Okay, the word. All right, it's back in next time. Yeah, one one of our one of our uh, responsibilities is. Uh, you know, financial oversight. So that, that's an important part of the project for us. Absolutely. John, I'll John. make sure that the next report includes that. Okay. Mr. Dowling. I'd just like to propose that as a matter of course, whatever's going to be shown to the clock gets shown to us first. Gets shown to us, first of all. And secondly, if we can't get it before clock gets it, we ought to get it very, very, very soon after. After all, we're the ones accountable to the community for this. As a suggestion, Robert, uh, you know, one thing that we could perhaps look to do, because the I don't want to upset the order of uh, the, the meetings right now, because typically the first Wednesday of the month is a clock meeting, then it's the operation uh, committee meeting the following week. Uh, I think it's more important to keep the data current and more relevant than letting it become stagnant and stale because of the timing. One thing that I thought that we could do possibly is as we distribute out our information to the clock members that we also uh, distribute it to the operations committee members so that you receive it the same time they do. Uh, that way there you get the full thing uh, for the benefit of this team here this afternoon. Many of the informations that are being shared with the clock is the same level that's going to the operation committee. The one caveat that occurs is that the clock does not get involved with looking at any of the non-referendum related projects and funding. They're just solely looking at the referendum where, as you saw going through this afternoons, not only did your material include the referendum information, it also included the 8% capital projects and updates as well. So um, if, uh, if it's the pleasure of the group to do so, I, I, I'll be glad to work with Robert and the team to make sure that as we distribute the next clock material, uh, that that gets to you as well simultaneously. Um, and that way there, you're receiving the exact same information that they receive. Uh, one thing that I will point out for those that are listening in, the clock materials are posted to the district website. So if you wanted to go back and look at the, the PowerPoint or the videos that were shared, those are all available uh, uh, on the on the district website, uh, along with their meeting minutes, uh, I, I I do know that from our conversations with the clock, they feel that it's very important that that material needs to go hand in hand with their meeting minutes to better understand the line of questions that they're asking us regarding that material, so that it gets taken in full content. Okay, so. That's on your to-do list then to distribute that to us also. I I'll think add that... it right away, David. All right, Cash that flow and distribution of the clock materials. Sounds good. All right. Um, if there's no other questions, uh, we can move on to uh, Ms. Walton and the HR storage of complaints and grievances. As we know, we, we talked about this a while back, so looks like it's reached fruition. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Robert.
Thank you, Mr. Strimminger, and um, good afternoon to Mr. Smith, and Mr. Dowling. We are, and, and as I um, stated earlier, this is, we're gonna try to keep this at 30 minutes. It is um, a lot of information, but we're gonna compact it and hopefully at the end of our presentation, you will know all you need to know about um, storage uh, systems. But we're gonna do two things this afternoon. We're gonna talk about the storage of complaints and grievances system-wide, uh, why we got where we are, how we got where we are, and what, what we're going to do now that we are where we are. And then secondly, we're gonna briefly talk about how this pandemic has affected or not affected our employees. So I'm gonna stop here and let Matt um, hunt. In fact, I'm gonna ask all of my team members to just introduce yourselves to the committee and tell them what your role are, your roles are in HR, because this is a team with boots on the ground and always in the front line. So I'm gonna start with Matt, and if the rest of you just kind of follow suit, that would be great. Well, good afternoon, members of the board, and thank you for uh, allowing us this opportunity to present to you. Um, I'm Matthew Hunt, and uh, I serve as one of the lead district mentors. There are four of us, and um, I also serve as appointed, uh, given my area of uh, knowledge, um, as um, on different projects that Ms. Walton would have me to do. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm LaKentia Swinton, and I'm the Director of Student Services, and my capacity as it relates to this um, particular meeting, I am the Title IX Coordinator for the district, and I also work with um, our employees with mental health and the supports that they need um, as they're dealing with traumatic issues. And good afternoon. My name is Dale Crawford. I'm the Human Resources Officer, and I deal with ensuring that all of our employees are paid properly, they're entered into the system properly, I work on system changes, I manage all the, uh, the staffing requirements to ensure that all the schools are staffed with, in accordance with their current allocations as well. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Jill McCadden, I'm the Talent Acquisition Specialist for the district. Um, hey, this is Jenny Staten, I'm the Risk Manager. Um, I work with Kiki on some of the Title IX issues. I work on accommodations, um, insurance claims, and the like. And good, afternoon, good evening. My name is Reggie Dees. I'm the Director of Personnel, and I work directly with our certified personnel, making sure that all of our staff members are properly certified and make sure that all of our schools are accredited. Thank you, Matt, if you will take it over. I believe um, Robin, Matt's gonna share his screen just for some talking points. Uh, I have a quick question. Go ahead, Go ahead um, uh, Mrs. Walton, today will, will we be, uh, will, will we be grief with the, uh, 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 from a PowerPoint presentation or anything? No, it, well, it is a PowerPoint presentation, but it's just talking points for Mr. Hunt to use. It's not to give you any information for uh, knowledge information. It's just a guide so that he can stay on track and you can see where he's going. Okay. What well, when in the, in the in the future when uh, uh, in in the future when you, when they, when they, when they when they come forth with, with any of that could could they please uh, submit it to the the uh, the the uh, assistant to the board so that she can put it in the board doc so that we can that we can that we can follow. Because uh, it, it, it is, it is, it is, it is very. Uh, I found that it is very. Um, it's helpful for for us to, for me to have things in writing so that I can understand. And if I have a question later, I can refer to it later or go or go or go back to it. So uh, in the future, when you bring something forward, could you please bring us something in writing as well? Thank you. I sure will. And in the future, if it is your request that we do everything PowerPoint wise, we can accommodate that. No, that, that's 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 not a request. It, it, it's just. Uh, like I said, uh, I, I stated uh, the first time that uh, if there are things are in writing or um, something that it, it is a, a PowerPoint, then or, or, or a something that is given from 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 the, the department that is speaking, then it, it, it's in the notes of of what they're presenting to us. Then that will be something that way we can go back and there's no dispute about what was said. Thank okay, you. thank you. All right, Matt, you can go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Uh, like Mr. Dowling has his hand up. 
I was just going to echo what, what Will said, because we get a lot of information thrown at us. And if we can get it in some form that's retrievable after the meeting so that we can review it, that would be very, very helpful. So I appreciate your cooperation on that. Thank you. Okay, members of the uh, operations committee, can you see um, on your screen, it should say why an HR management tool? It's there. Okay. So um, what we're talking about, um, it has been brought to the attention of the human resource department that we need a way to um, sort of central, centralize all of the information that comes in pertaining to complaints, um, alleged harassment and um, alleged grievances. And so this um, HR management tool uh, we, that we have kind of come up with in our minds as, as being some ideal things that we would like to see, um, are, we're going to give you some points to, about that, some talking points today. So the first thing is with the centralized system, what we're really looking for is, is a web-based system that will allow us to store information, that will allow us to categorize our incidences. And when I say categorize incidences, it could be anything from categorizing um, whatever the incident is, say it's a Title IX complaint, or it might be able to, um, we, we could also categorize the incidences by department or by building. So we can identify trends to find out whether or not there are things in the, uh, going on in the district or in a, maybe in a particular building or with a particular person that then we can mitigate against. Um, it also allows us to make database decisions to look for trends again in the district. Um, it will improve our efficiency and accuracy of reporting. And again, I think this is important is risk mitigation. And the risk mitigation really has to do with having such a centralized process or a standardized process that everybody of the 32 schools in the district um, implements this process with fidelity. We believe that our return on investment will allow us to not only standardize the investigations and improve the reporting process, but as we mentioned, to mitigate risk and litigation. Um, we don't want anybody being able to say that a timeline had started, uh, that there was something unofficial or that the documentation one person received did not match documentation of another person. Mr. Dowling, sir. Um, is this system focused on Title IX or are you also handling grievances that fall outside of Title IX? That's an excellent question. And this system, um, we want to be able to um, meet the Title IX requirements as well as harassment and grievance. And the right vendor will be able to, um, ideally we'll have a configurable web platform where we can set that up to meet the needs of the district. And so that way that'll allow us to categorize and uh, um, address all of the um, complaints that come in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And that was the last part of the return on investment here, sir, is the meeting the federal, uh, federal Title IX requirements, which everybody knows, I believe, um, have been updated, I believe, in August of 2020. The functional components that we have envisioned, we envision a process um, for intake, and the intake process, as it stands right now, there is a harassment form and there is a grievance form. And both of those forms are found in PDF format. They're uneditable as it is right now. And they're, they're um, located on the district website. Multiple sources that we're talking about in order to be able to uh, meet the intake process that we wish. We wish to have a web link that would be on the, uh, on the website. We also want, if somebody comes into the office to file a complaint verbally, we want to be able to input that data right away um, to start a timeline, time stamp it, and date stamp it, which means then that we will be in full compliance with our administrative regulations. Um, we also want to be able to have a phone-in option as well, and um, that kind of outlines our intake process. So in other words, we need for our employees to have multiple ways to report. The next component is a, a case management system. And really what that boils down to are um, both workflow and it allows the people that are considered super users to be able to monitor activity, to look for deadlines, to look for notification, to look for overdue items and the people that the uh, case was um, assigned to and to follow up to make sure that we're meeting timelines. And then the last part I think would be of particular interest to the board and that would be a report generator 
that allows us to pull information. Um, so for example, if the board wanted to know in August of 2020, how many complaints were received and what was the average time um, or the average age of the complaint to resolution, we would be able to have those numbers right there immediately for you. The last part of the report generator, um, we envision uh, having a process where we can have standardized documents. And that would be able to help general counsel when it comes time for um, whether it's reporting a resolution or um, giving feedback on where we are in the process, that it would basically be a template that we could configure and it would be standardized to everybody that receives that. Standardized process will allow us to make sure that there are clear roles and responsibilities for all stakeholders. Now for the district, what that means is, is we need to provide training to our administrators about what complaints consist of versus a grievance, what would actually be a grievance and versus harassment and exactly delineate and define what those three, um, those three processes are. For the employee, the employee, it would, it would mandate that the employee follow reporting procedures in order to um, be able to have this be an official process. As it stands right now, and I am a former school administrator, um, it could be that a, a school principal receives an email about an alleged complaint from one teacher um, to another teacher. And then the principal will then handle that internally, which means that the school board has no idea or the district has no idea of what actually took place at that individual site. Having a standardized system would allow oversight from the part of super users and super users generally would be general counsel. It would be the superintendent, chief human resources officer and the director of uh, certified and classified personnel. And finally with administrators, it would force administrators to follow the investigating, the reporting and the resolution timelines. Um, the, the platform that we envision would be able to show a desktop that when you open it, it there's a to-do list and the to-do list has deadlines embedded in it so that um, administrators stay on time so that we can have a fidelity to the process. And finally, for our stages of implementation, stage one, um, we really look at in August of 2020, being able to have an online demonstration and question and answer with reps Stage two, or the chief human resources officer, um, we wanted to present information to her about what we envisioned the system to look like and to get approval for an RFP and then present it to the operations committee. This is September, 2020, and that's what we're doing today. The RFP is out, um, the bids are due by September 21st. And so when the committee has been established to select a vendor, the vendor project team will be assigned to the district um, we hope that that takes place by the mid to the end of October 2020. Stage four, it takes approximately eight to 16 weeks to build a platform uh, that we have. And so we want to configure that for the district to make sure that when we reach full implementation in December, that we roll out the program as though it has been in place. And that's the only way we've ever operated. And so that ends um, our portion of presentation here. I'd like to open the uh, floor for questions, please. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Down. Okay. Uh, number one, how much historical data is going to be loaded into the platform? In other words, old grievances. Or is this from starting from the day that it your turnkey going forward. Matt, you want me to jump in on this? Sure. I, I thought Mr. Dowling was asking the chairman. I'm sorry, Ms. Walton. Oh, okay. No, Ms. Whoever wants to answer that, I had the exact same question. That's an excellent question. And similar to what we're doing with benefits and going to a paperless system, um, whereby we're trying to get everything loaded into the system, it's going to take some time. Um, my, my vision would be at the direction of the operating committee to, to let us know how far back you want us to go uh, so that we can then begin to input that data so we can establish a historical record. Um, one thing I would say, Mr. Dowling, is that um, the ideal vendor would be somebody also that would be um, able to tap into Munis. So for 
example, if we had an employee that we had some issues with um, that left the district maybe for five or six years and then came back to the district, because the employee number is the same, that that would allow us to continue having a uh, sort of a, a file built on that person so that if issues again arise, then we would have that knowledge as well. Okay, now the second question a little quicker. Uh, Alice, will the administrators be fully aware of the consequences for not following the system and trying to settle a matter at the school level without going through the system? Yes, um, and that's one of the things that we need to do a very, very good job of. It's when we roll the system out and we actually do the training for the administrators, they need to understand all of the steps because with a system like this, if you don't follow the steps, then it makes the process null and void. So in order to protect employees and to protect the district in terms of liabilities later, they must follow the process. And one thing that the system does is it keeps track. And if the processes are not followed, then we are notified immediately. So yes, they will be yeah, notified I'm, what I'm, the consequences are. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of s avoiding the system altogether mm -hmm. <laughs> to settle a problem internally to the school without informing the system that the problem exists. One of the things we need to do, Mr. Dowland, is train employees as well. Okay, so if there's yeah. a problem. If they know, if they know, right, right. Yes, yeah. and they know that this is going to be their way to get the problem solved. Once they go in and enter a complaint in the system, there's no taking it out. It has to be rectified in that system. Mr. Dowling, Thank you very um, much. to follow up on that as well, there's, there would be a workflow that's assigned as well. And so that when an employee does file a complaint, um, that the super users would then be able to read the complaint and make a determination as to who to assign that task to in order to uh, come to resolution or to begin the investigation and then ultimately come to resolution. Okay. Again, we're not talking about a, 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 a gargantuan amount of complaints here per year, right? So, uh, no, we're this not. This sounds very right, right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to make a, 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 one, a comment on one of the questions Mr. Dowling had about um, back history. I, I know that um, we'd, we'd all like to get everything put into the system. However, Alice has, I don't know, seven filing cabinets full of uh, I think it's nine, history. Dale. I think it's nine. nine. Yes. I don't envision all of that going into this system. I envision it going effective maybe July 1st, or my, I'm sorry, January 1st of 2021, when we finally go live to start capturing that data. Who's speaking? I can't see. Dale Crawford. Oh, okay, Mr. Crawford. Uh, yes, sir. Is it, is it fair to say, though, that all current employees will have any previous grievances that they filed loaded into the platform? We could, Mr. Dowling, we could Mr. probably Dowling, yes. look at that. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Alice? Yes, I think we could. Because like you said earlier, it's not that many. Um, it's not something that we get yes. 15 or 20 a day of. So current yeah. employees, if we have them in file, I, I see no reason why we can't yeah. put them in the system. Yeah, those, those seven file cabinets uh, are most likely, uh, the majority are people who are no longer with us. Sure. Correct? So correct. It, it should be a relatively, okay, good. Yes, Thank correct. Thank you. Okay, I would just like to follow up on Mr. Dowling's so thing. If you, if you don't load the history in that you have, then you're opening yourself up to litigation. And you know that. Um, correct. Because, yeah, then you're, so it's kind of important to get that history in there because any history you don't put in is uh, leaves you open. Um, the other question I have on, on the implementation of December 2020 looks pretty ambitious to me based on eight to 16 weeks to build the platform and, and generate the templates. And then the training, I guess, would be in stage four. Is that where the, the training would be for, for all the, the folks? Yes. yes. So I would say, you know, once we determine um, a vendor and we've had a committee that wants to select and, and uh, honor the 
um, the contract, then we would have a, uh, an internal committee that works with the vendor project, uh, the project team. And the vendor project team, then we would be able to establish exactly the standardized documents that we want to have and need to have, and at which point we'll understand exactly what kind of training the administrators need to have. Okay, that sounds good to me. Uh, I have one more question, if you just bear with me. Will the employee who submits a grievance, a complaint, or sexual harassment, whatever they submit, will they have access to follow the progress of, of their complaint? Because that was one of the holes we were trying to fill. Um, so I don't know if you can, if, if when you're selecting uh, the package that you're gonna implement to, to see if that function is available. So the employee can go out there and only view theirs and see yes. where it is um, in the process. I think that's, a, that's an excellent point. Um, because the system that we envision would have a case number attached to it, um, we wanna make sure that the employee who submits the, the actual complaint is able to file up by that case number their information, yes, and where they are in the process. Okay, and just them, no, no And just else. them, just that's them. correct. Okay, uh, I think that addresses one of the issues that Mr. Smith had brought to our attention earlier um, about you know, the employees not knowing that things were progressing. Um, I don't want to speak for you, Will, so. One last question. Go ahead, Mr. On, impl on implementation, um, this is just my personal opinion, okay? But as soon as I hear a sentence such as, our goal is to have it done by such and such a date, my brain shuts down. Goals can, goals are, too negotiable. I want commitments. So I would appreciate is that you be as conservative as possible and realize that when you're putting down dates in an implementation plan, you're going to be held to them unless there's a god awfully good reason why they're not met. So I would love to hear the word commitment rather than goals. That's just my personal fetish. And, and and this is Dale again, Dale Crawford again. And I've done probably a dozen implementations in HR and with finance. And normally after uh, the vendor has been selected, we do get a, t a solid timeline from the vendor identifying where, uh, where we're going to be at a certain point in time and all the way to the completion day. So once the vendor is selected, we will ensure that that whoever the vendor is provides us with a solid timeline and that we will we will meet those uh, those goals and those uh, those gates thank you okay. uh, I do have a, a question go ahead mr. Smith um, also uh, I would like to go back off of what mr. Dolan said earlier um, I, I, I uh, now correct me if I'm wrong uh, basically I was saying that there are nine <laughs> nine um, there, there are nine file file cabinets full of grievances that has been filed. Not necessarily all grievances, Mr. Smith. This is all legal um, right. documents that we've gone through. Some right. are grievances, and others are um, employee issues. Right, uh, and, and and there there was an issue with with putting them with putting all of them in the to the system. No, we didn't say it was an issue. Oh, okay, I just, I started to see someone was saying that it was it was a lot, or uh, or it would be a, a whole lot to uh, put it in. Because no, I, I, I think we were questioning, we were okay. questioning how much do you want to go back, and then we determined that it would probably be best if all current employees, if all current employees, any of their concerns or files would be placed in the system that would suffice because most of the people in those files are probably not with us anymore. Well, well, that, well, I, well, well, well I, I, I partly agree, but I, I, I well, I, I disagree with just the fact that any grievances are always potential lawsuits. So that will be the, 
the file to protect the district. So I think not to file those will be a, a disservice to the district. It also, especially if we're paying for a, and we're paying for a software to do that. Then I think that uh, all I, my my belief is that all of it should be uploaded. I mean, because you never know, uh, you know, especially uh, when someone may come back and uh, have an issue, or someone may come back with some uh, potential litigation against the district. Uh, so I mean, you just never know. So I think that it all should be put in, put in, uh, put into the system. That's that's just my uh, personal. Uh, that, that's just something something, something I, that's that's how I, how I feel about it. Um, and, and and also. Uh, with, with with the with the timestamp, if it's done, if it's done across the, if it's gonna cross the internet, how, how will it? How will that be timestamped? Um, that's a, that anything we submit on the internet, uh, it it, it gets timestamped with a, a a URL, a web address of where it came from, a time and a date. And and, and then how, how about the reader? The person who the person who who, who, retrieve, who retrieves it that would go right to a desktop on a to do list um, of the super user. They would and, see that on a dashboard. Okay, and 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 which functions would 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 involve the actual superintendent? I believe, uh, and Alex, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't have the AR in front of me. But I believe that um, Alice handles all the grievances. Is that correct, Alice? Your word is final on all the that, grievances. That is correct, and we've discussed this several times before about the way the current regulations are set up, and grievances usually come to HR, and they are finalized in HR. So oh, the, the superintendent uh, is not in the grievance process, and that's the regulation. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. Oh, no, I'm done. Go ahead. I'm, I'm done. Oh, okay. I don't see any other hands, but. Uh, Mr. Dowling had a question. Okay. Mr. Dowling. Uh, Alice, as you know, we are, we, the board, the full board, is in the process of conducting readings for a new policy manual. Correct. So there is, and there is a policy, a proposed policy, in there on how to handle grievances of the superintendent and the uh, and or board members. Okay, so I think you would be well advised to expect a change, or to expect to have to make a change to the administrative regulation on that. I understand that for now, until it's adopted. We have the policy that we have, but I think it's, it's in the near term that that policy is going to change. So please incorporate that into your thinking. I will, thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Uh, oh, and uh, one, uh, okay, one, okay. I'm sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wanna clarify what I, what I meant about current employees. I meant yes. that as a starting point, as a starting point. But I fully agree with uh, Mr. Stribinger and Mr. Smith that somebody can be gone for three or four years and decide to sue us. I, I doubt if this, I don't know what the statute of limitations are on uh, these type of things, but uh, somebody can be gone pretty a, a fairly long time and still turn around and sue us. So uh, I want to emphasize if, if it's, if you have to do it in stages, current employee is probably a good first stab at it. But I think the uh, ultimate commitment should be to get the entire history codified in the file. Okay. I, I will tell you that the Title IX uh, regs require that we keep files for seven years. And that's it. Well, I'm, yeah, and I will say that I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about what the board wants HR to keep, to keep that, our litigious situation in hand. Okay, so if you have to go above fine. and beyond the Title IX, that that's the way it is. Okay. So I think the committee agrees that we should load every grievance we're aware of, and you can work that into your timeline. I think that's the unanimous Great. feeling of this committee. Yeah, yeah, agree. Yeah. Um, 
you can stage it, stage it however you want. Because as I said, and I think John reemphasized it, any grievance that we have in that filing cabinet can come back and bite us. Um, and it, it, I know it'll take time, but you can work that into your timeline. Sure. Also, um, I want to recommend that, that we also uh, share this information with the full board, uh, that this, this, this presentation. I, I agree with that, that that ought to be on a, a future uh, agenda, near term, near term agenda. Actually, actually uh, Dave, uh, do you want me to make a motion uh, or, or will you just give this, will, will you uh, have this presented at the, um, un, un, under, uh, um, at, the at the next board Operator. meeting, uh, under our operations? Okay. Are you folks up for doing it <laughs> on the 15th? Mr. <laughs> this, uh, sure. Mr. Scribbage, are you here? I, I'm here. I'm waiting for everybody to get done talking. Um, okay. Yeah, we can put this under the committee report. I'll try to get that in. Um, and then you can give the same report that you gave here. The report's well done. We're just pointing out some, you know, some decisions and really the board makes all the decisions so even if we tell you to load all the history if the full board says don't then <laughs> what our opinion is irrelevant um, so, yeah. so we are going to have to go before the full board exactly so if you're prepared and i think you are i think you said you are i will try to get it yeah. on our, our next agenda um, we are fair okay uh, uh, mrs Scrib mrs uh, yes, scribbiger I actually, are the uh, uh, Robert, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I believe the oper the operations committee is on the uh, on the next on the next agenda. Is that correct, Robert? Yes, it is. Right. Okay, it's just so, not so. a bullet point under there, Will. Okay. Okay. Well, right. well, well I, okay. Well, I don't remember remember us having bullet points, but also, uh, if Mrs. Walton would also uh, would send the uh, the talking points to us to to, to put in the board docs for the board meeting, uh, that would be definitely appreciated as well. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I move that the Operations Committee endorse or recommend the proposed implementation plan as presented, provided that the entire history of grievances is included in the loading of the platform. Can you state that again? You move that the Operations Committee endorse the full implementation plan? Plan, uh -huh. provided, provided that the full history of grievances and complaints for the district be loaded into the platform. I'll second for discussion. Discussion? I have nothing, I have no discussion. I think I'm said what I feel about it three or four times. Well, it's just um, to reaffirm what we're discussing right now. Well, my, my concern is also that it's in writing and that it's just, this is not something that is given to us verbally and before, and and basically are you, are you saying that you want us to, you want the, you want the full board to go ahead and purchase a, purchase a, a program? No, all I'm saying yeah. is that we're by, we don't object to anything in the implementation plan around grievance storage as long as the decision is clear that all the grievances will be kept within that platform. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, well, I do... Um... I would like for you to add. add, add I, I would need. I would need the plan to be spelled uh, spell out in writing. I would need to see them black and white, not not just verbal. Well, uh, what do you mean? If, the motion if, if, will be in the minutes. The motion will be in the minutes, Mr. Smith. And when we do it before the full board, it'll go into the full board minutes, so you'll have it in writing. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Good. The minutes of the legal record will. Okay. This is future reference, I'm not like black and white, but that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, any more discussion? 
Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. It's three. Oh, it's up on four docks. Thank you, Ron. Okay, then uh, I will make that motion on behalf of this committee when, uh, or John, you can make the motion when we, when we do this report. One of us to make this motion. Okay, um, I don't see any other hands. Um, I think now we can move to the uh, COVID-19 impact on employees, Ms. Walton? Yes. Um, surprisingly enough, and I guess I need to um, make this statement before we begin, we are at the second day of opening school, so our impacts, while they might be minimal at this point, could change at any time. Especially it could change if um, we change from virtual to face-to-face -face in terms of um, employees that feel that they can't do face-to-face. -face. So for right now, it, uh, our impacts are, I won't say minimal, they are out there, but I won't say that this is as bad as it, it could get. So I'm going to just start with what I see um, has been the most obvious impact on employees. Number one, it has been a very sincere concern from staff, teachers, about going back into the classroom face-to-face. -face. Concerns for their health, concerns for health of others, and concerns for um, them period in terms of getting ill, their health concerns. So what we did in that point was to create a vehicle by which they could express that. We could follow the letter of the law, give them leaves based on their needs or a second party need. And these are all within law. So we set up that process and Jennifer will talk just a little bit about how that looks how many applications we've had and where we are with that. And then secondly, there is a real serious concern with teachers and staff about childcare when we do a hybrid model or teachers having children with no childcare that have to go through a virtual learning themselves. So those are the two major issues that I've seen that it's clearly um, come to the top. In terms of resignations, we really haven't seen too much of an impact because our numbers at this point are a bit lower than they were last year and even three years ago. Our retirements have remained steady. Three years ago, I think we had 57 people retire last year, 27. And I believe this year up to about two weeks ago, we had 24 retirements. So those are still steady. Um, We've had, um, I would say, a good run at retaining teachers this year. And I, I, would, I would contribute some of it to the uncertainty in moving with the pandemic out and about. And the resignations that we have seen have all dealt with people going back to be close to family because of the pandemic. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna ask Jennifer just to quickly talk about our accommodations, how many we've had, where we are, how many have been approved and how many we still have pending. Hey, this is Jenny. So uh, Rosella and I worked together and so we had an application process and then they supplied documentation to support their accommodation request and we either worked with the employee or their physician um, so we have granted 130 accommodation requests. Most were for virtual, virtual work, but um, there was for some other things. We still have a few pending. We have about two dozen pending requests, and these folks got their applications in by August and either were still working on the accommodation or um, we're just waiting on some document. But we've let their principals know, so the principals will not be surprised and should be planning for these um, pending accommodations. We've been updating the principals 
um, every week for the last month on where the status is with their accommodation requests. Any questions to this point, Mr. Strivender? I do not see any hands, so just keep rolling. Uh, one of the other things that we are going to adjust this year because of the pandemic is the way that we do substitutes. So we had a substitute pool and anyone or any teacher in the district who needed a sub could call the system five o'clock in the morning or later uh, that night before to request a sub. Well, in order to keep exposure down and keep um, the pandemic in mind and people moving in and out of the building when we go back face to face with children is to assign subs to each school so that there are three subs, two to three subs in each building that will relieve teachers in that building and that building only so that those teachers will, will have the same subs and they will, those subs will be only exposed to those children or the children in that building will only be exposed to those three subs. So we are um, changing the model a bit in order to accommodate, accommodate the pandemic. So that was a, a change. In terms of our mental health for employees, Kiki is uh, on the line, and can you just talk a little bit about what we have available and what we've seen up to this point? Robert, okay, thank you. I think I'm unmuted now. <laughs> Good afternoon. So as um, Mrs. Walton shared, we do have a partnership that is in place to support the mental health of staff and um, teachers. We have partnered with Hope Performance Systems for the last couple of years. They have offered a discounted pricing rate for staff to be able to receive mental health counseling. Um, that is a cash rate that is acceptable for the employee as well as their immediate family. So they are able to receive those services through Hope Performance System. We also have the ability to refer staff who are in need of support um, counseling as through um, HR and that is billed back to the district, but otherwise it is um, the responsibility of the employee. That rate is at a lesser cost than what they would pay if they just went in as a person off the street um, to receive those mental health services. Up until this point, um, due to the coronavirus pandemic, we have not seen an increase in referrals through the district or um, personal referrals to Hope Performance System that have been reported back to us. Um, utilizing that cash rate, but the services are available and they are continuing to work with us as a partner to provide mental health support, school-based um, virtually to our students as well. Um, can I just follow up a little on that, please? Um, are you telling me that, that when someone self-refers, um, there is not a firewall between that and us so that we know that they self-referred? So HIPAA prevents us from knowing when a, a staff member self-refers. Okay. So what Hope Performance can provide to us is a number of employees that have taken advantage of that cash rate that they are offering, because right. that is a discounted rate that's only offered to Beaufort County School District. So they can provide that to us. They cannot, if I walk in as a, as a self-referral, they cannot provide that information back to Alice to say Kiki is being treated for X, Y, or Z. Um, but if, if we make a referral through the school district for a particular reason, so if we have a staff member that um, in their duties, in the, in the um, I guess, while they're teaching and they have a nervous breakdown, or, or if Alice mm -hmm. has to go in and meet with someone and they have a, a clear mental health issue or a substance abuse issue, any of those things that would fall into that realm, Alice has the ability to approve or the district to pay for that person to have their initial assessment and um, subsequent services. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that there was an informational firewall there. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Yeah, because yep. I, I, I see WTOC is on the line, so I wanted to clear that up. Um, HIPAA still right. in place. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Miss um, McGadden, Jill, are you there? 
She, she might be muted. I just want Jill to talk just a little bit about the differences she saw this year in terms of virtual um, recruiting and the virtual fairs. That affected us to a bit, uh, but it was kind of beneficial in, in some way. And I'll, I'll let Jill give you a, a brief summary of how she took all of this. Um, thank you, Alice. So as Ms. Walton was saying, um, recruiting remotely has, it came on very fast, very strong. Um, career fairs were canceled starting in March all the way through May. So as a recruiter, um, I have leaned heavily on Sarah, not Sarah a person, Sarah the Center for Educational Recruitment, Retention, and Advancement. Um, a lot of applicants have applied on Sarah, and um, during this pandemic, most teachers have been available to speak with me on the phone. So I've been able to build relationships with potential new hires over time. Instead of a normal year, all the teachers are working from 7.30 in the morning till sometimes six at night. So my day might be scattered early, late into the evening. Most people were available for phone calls. Um, I did use a strategy to, to cohort hire. Um, we talked about this a little bit last year, but if I got someone interested that say went to University of Pennsylvania, um, this teacher might bring me another candidate that he or she would recommend as a strong candidate for an interview and I can lure more people to come to Beaufort County if they um, come with a, a colleague. Um, that's been very popular this year. Um, every year we have different shortages. Um, this year has not been a shortage in the world of special ed. I'm happy, very happy to report. Um, like Ms. Walton said, we're in the second day of school. Um, so it's been an interesting year. It's been a good year. The silver lining is I have developed a lot of great relationships with folks over the phone. Didn't get to meet them face to face, but um, we are, you know, talking very often and they're excited to be stepping into our school district. And they feel very supported. Um, Mr. Dees, are you, oh. okay. Mr. Dees, are you on the line? Getting unmuted. Okay. One of the things we had to do this year uh, was when we, we always have new employee orientations during the summer. And you might remember that we usually do that every Monday. Well, we still did that every Monday. We added another day. I think it was every Monday and every Wednesday. But it was all done virtually. And I'm going to let um, Reggie talk a little bit about that process and the successes of that. Good evening. Uh, the uh, orientations, uh, the virtual orientations uh, went very smoothly. It was our first chance, first time having to do a virtual orientation. And as Jill stated, it was a great opportunity to, to, to see all the candidates. We didn't get to see them physically, but they were online virtually. Uh, we had an opportunity to answer all their questions. Some of those questions we may not have, have uh, received uh, in person. So they felt more comfortable asking those questions virtually and uh, along with the rest of the HR team uh, uh, benefits, Mr. Crawford, Jennifer, uh, um, and Jill, uh, the entire HR team, we, we, uh, we participated and answered um, um, all the questions from, from all of our candidates. Um, again, as, as, as Ms. Walton said, we um, had a virtual orientation on Monday. Technology also participated and made sure that the, uh, uh, the new hires uh, signed up to receive that technology earlier. So they set up, their, they set up meetings uh, physically with about nine of the teachers three times a day um, to receive that technology, which was great. They received the technology really quickly so they could participate in meetings with the, the, their new school, the principal and the district office. Thank you. Mr. Crawford, um, you worked the whole summer getting uh, new positions in the system and making sure all schools were staffed with the number of 
positions they had allocated for that school. Did you notice any changes or differences this year? Probably one of the, uh, the, the biggest change that we've seen on our end, because we were responsible for getting them into our pay system and, and creating their pay, their pay profile, um, we, we felt as though we were ahead of the, the, the curve. Uh, we weren't trying to catch up to get people in. In fact, when, uh, when they uh, appeared for an orientation date, they were already in the system and we had already created their, their user account and their user IDs and their email addresses as well um, by getting them into Munis uh, sooner instead of waiting until after they came in and attended a physical orientation we had to get them in prior to the orientation, which sped the, the process up greatly as well. And I just want to piggyback off what Jill said. One thing is I've been in probably the district almost 20 years, and this is the first year that I can remember that we started school with all the special ed teachers on board. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Did I miss anybody, um, Matt? Talk a little bit about the induction teachers, brand new to the uh, education period. Yes, ma'am. So the, the induction teachers, brand new to education period, I believe um, in our experiences and our seminars that we've done online with them, that they are very well prepared. Um, they're very optimistic because a lot of our brand new teachers are digital natives. So living in the world of technology is not something that's new or foreign to them. Um, the teachers uh, have come in rather than looking at this year as an obstacle and they've, they've begun to look at this year as opportunities. So um, as from the induction and mentoring standpoint, we are still continuing to provide all of our services. Um, we attend classes via Zoom invites and uh, we conduct our seminars just like we normally would in person, albeit we do it um, on virtually. Thank you. I think I, I got everybody, did I? Yes, okay. ma'am. Mr. Strivinger, I think this ends our um, report to you, unless you have, uh, your committee has questions. Well, I have one question, and, and I think the full board would be really interested in this same presentation. Um, and the public at large, I think, would, would be very interested in this. Um, mentors for the new, they still have mentors, right? And, the, and okay. Yes, sir, we have two levels. Uh, the district mentors, which is four leads uh, with about 15 retirees, and then they have building mentors as well. Okay, but yeah, I, the, I was thinking, you know, there's really no building anymore it's when we're virtual. So just wanted to make sure those services are still being delivered just as our education's being delivered. Yes, sir. They, they have all the support they've always had, if not yes, more. Sir. Okay, excellent. Uh, Ms. Dowling, Mr. Smith, any questions? Hold on, Mr. Dowling, you're muted. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alice, what, what is the timeline for further development on the child care discussions? Uh, uh, Mr. Dowling, we are currently in the negotiation processes of putting some options together to take back to the superintendent. We are closer today than we were. Uh, one of the things that we would like to do is to get, if we are going to commit to supporting our teachers this way, and I have to say, I think uh, the district would serve our staff well if we provided childcare. I think this would be um, a win-win for all of us. One of the things that we would like to do is to get this rolling as quickly as possible so that they can be in place for virtual learning as well as when we do the hybrid. So at this point, um, I'm working on the financial piece right now to take back to the superintendent with the whole package and then he can just, uh, he'll make the call after that. Yes, Mr. Downing. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> That's good. Oh, okay. You're done. Mr. Smith's hand. I was, hands I was up. clapping. <laughs> oh, okay. Mr. Smith? Uh, so, my question to you was uh, are you uh, proposing this to the full board as well? Can you repeat that, Will? Because I don't think everybody could hear you very well. I said, my, my question was to you. 
uh, are you proposing this uh, presentation to the full board as well? Uh, I think the full board would be very interested in this. And I think the public would be very interested in it. So, yes, I am proposing that we put this as a bullet point under the operations committee. Um, unless there's a problem, Alice, I mean, I, you, you've given a nice presentation. It's all, all information everybody wants to know. So uh, I, I think it's important for us to, you know, to broadcast it out. No, I, I don't see a problem, Mr. Strudinger. We, um, we will be happy to let the board as well as the public know what we do in HR. Um, I think it's a vital service to the district, um, to our employees, and we work very hard to take care of our employees. And a lot of times we don't tell people what we do. We just yes. come in and get the job done. So yes, we will be happy to do it. So we will put this as a bullet point under uh, the operations committee report. Okay. Okay. Is that will be fine. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I don't see any hands, but I'm not sure we're adhering to that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, uh, William's hand went back up, I believe. Oh, I'm, so I'm, not, seeing, I'm not seeing it. it. No, actually what happened was uh, my, my uh, it, was, it was buffering. Excuse me, it was, it was, it was buffering. Um, oh. um, my my only question would be um, uh, also once they come back it would, it would be it would be great to have uh, what we're saying in right in writing. I mean it's it's just one thing to say you know uh, uh, verbally, but in right in writing is always always better for me. So uh, that that's just something that I will continue to ask for it uh, is for is for them to even when they give us updates to give us some updates to reference bullet points in in writing. And, and also to clarify before we get done, uh, Mrs. Walton, the, the notes, it will be sent out to, to the committee today, correct? Are you talking about Mr. Hunt's presentation? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes, and I think you also requested that that be put in board docs for the full board. Am I correct? Yes, 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 yes ma'am. Yes, ma you are? Yes, it will be. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, thank you all. None of us, by the way, just for me speaking, none of us understand how hard your job is, but we, we really do appreciate it. Even though we grill you on this stuff, we, we know how hard it is. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Scrivenger. Thank, thank you for acknowledging that. Thank you. That's, that means a lot to us. Uh, let's, can we move on to PE10, Safety and Security? I believe that's Mr. Grissom. Okay, good afternoon, committee. How are you guys doing? We're doing pretty well. Let me just say okay. that I, hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, let me just say that, uh, no, I, I, I do I do understand how, how, how hard they work. Uh, uh, so I do understand that how it is. Mr. Smith, I can't hear a thing you're saying. You're breaking up. Okay. But basically, I just want to say that I do, and I can't fathom how much uh, how how much work the they the eight party part do. I think I think they're. I appreciate their work moving forward. And I, and I, and I never question their work. Thank you. We lost you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I think we all just got a demonstration of how frustrating it must be for some students and teachers who don't have a very good internet connection as oh, they go yes. through virtual learning. How Absolutely. true. Absolutely. Technology is great, except when it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, let's, let's move on to PE 10 and then um, 
maybe we'll get into a better spot. Okay, um, to piggyback on what Mr. Dowling just said, I think we all got a good demonstration of how law enforcement has felt for many years with communications in our schools, um, and that's currently being upgraded, thank goodness. So, okay, here's my, the, the PE, I'm gonna give you, a, it's you know, five or six pages long, I'm gonna give you some talking points. The, the two biggest things I've done this summer is the emergency plan has been updated, and as required by law, I submit that to the um, local fire marshal, as well as the Buford County Emergency Management. They are currently reviewing our, our plan um, and they should have it back to me shortly. Uh, once I get that back, I'll be sharing that with all my principals and staff of the school. Uh, the other main thing that I've done recently here was the model school checklist that I'm required to do for the, uh, for the state. That's normally due by September 1st. This year it was due actually October 1st, but it's been completed already and submitted. Um, as you know, we are currently in hurricane season. The, uh, the, um, the county is currently in UPCOM 1 right now and we'll stay in UPCOM 1 until we're threatened with a uh, tropical storm or hurricane. Thank goodness so far it's been quiet, at least in our area, um, but it doesn't look good for the future. Who knows what's gonna happen. Um, as far as um, our law enforcement partners, they have completed all their training through about the summer in several probably uh, at least 10 of our schools doing active shooter training with um, every officer in the county from the four local police departments we work with they have completed all their training um, i was there on several occasions to witness the training um, that's been done and, and continues to uh, uh, be an important part of what we do so i've only you know, it's been a quiet year i've only issued one no trespass order thank goodness that was for a gentleman who threatened to uh, actually storm Bluffton schools. So, so he's currently the only one we have under no trespass at this time. Um, in order to, to uh, stay current with state law and the uh, our drills, the fire drills and our craze training, um, I have been working with the state fire marshal and SLED to update the training. We are currently, um, September will be the first month we actually have a fire drill and it's gonna look different this year. Um, right now, there are no students in our schools, but they're still required to do a fire drill. When students do return to school, they will be doing their fire drills. Uh, they will pull the alarm, talk about it in class, and then throughout the day, each class will be responsible for taking their kids out one at a time to in the designated area. Um, but it will be pointed out to them that it was real that everybody would, the same thing's going to apply for the, uh, for the craze training and the um, avoid, deny, defend. We will have an officer there. I'll be there for every school when we do this. Again, when the, when the kids are all back in school, uh, we will uh, announce the drill, whether it be a modified lockdown or a lockdown. The teacher will have certain questions she'll be going over with the class. She will walk to the area where they would normally go for a real lockdown drill, but they will remain in their seats um, in the class. Obviously, she'll point out that if it was real, they would be accompanying her to the to the area. I've also attached um, some of the, a questionnaire for the uh, sample drill sheet that every teacher will be required to fill out. And that, that's going to be my documentation for the state that I'll have to keep records of every single class in the county that, that so they can peep their drills, peep their drills. Also I've attached the uh, upcoming statewide drills from the uh, great shakeout to the winter weather preparedness to the tornado drill, hurricane preparedness week, all that's been attached for, for your viewing. Um, and the last thing I attached was the, uh, what we use for avoid, deny, defend in reference to our craze training. And that still applies district wide. Uh, that's pretty much it for my presentation, short and simple. Um, any questions? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Mr. Down. I, mo I moved that the committee forward the uh, PE documentation to the full board with our recommendation that it be accepted. Well, we Second. Have, oh, you're back, Mr. Smith. Great. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain. William? I'll abstain. William abstained. So that's two zero one.
Thank you. All right. Oh, one question, uh, Mr. Grissom. What, what time period? What time period does this cover? This PE. This covers from my last um, briefing with you guys. I believe it was in May. So over the okay. summer. Through September. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes, that's important, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Excuse yes, me. sir. Yeah, that's important for everybody to realize that it is that the vote has nothing to do with. Uh, what's going to happen in the future? It's what Mr. Grissom accomplished during that time frame. So yes. when I okay. Yep. And the That's last oh, excuse we, we me. The we last, agree. We agree. The um, last date was May the twelfth, twenty twenty. Okay. So this was yeah May twelfth through September eighth. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Grissom. Thank you. All right. Um, we are down to future topics. Uh, before we hit future topics, yes, sir. Uh, I guess my signal is working now, but uh, I was just uh, echoing back off of what you said. There was that. Um, um, I, 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 I want to give the same. Uh, I give this the the HR department the, 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 the kudos as well. But all, along with that is that um, I never doubt, doubt that they work that they work hard that they don't work hard because. I've done HR uh, work and work in my, in, my, in my past, and I know how hard it is to work in, in HR, and there's a lot of work uh, coming continuously. But, you know, I, I, I thank them for continuing to, to do diligent work in that department. All right. You're muted, Ms. Swalton. I can lip read. I think you said thank you. I did. I, I said, um, thank you, Mr. Smith. We appreciate that compliment. We try our best. Okay. Uh, now on to future topics. Um, Mr. Stribinger, the communications yes. needs to bring a PE. It was due this um, meeting, but because school just opened, we have a new communications director. Um, they asked if they can bring it to the October meeting. To the October meeting. Okay. Yeah. So that would be a future topic. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, we got everything fit into two hours. We covered a lot of material. Um, I think we're done. Unless I see Ms. Robine and Ms. Fidrich are also on. If you have any questions, I'd give you the opportunity now to... Uh, I don't see any hands, so I think... Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. I second it. All right, that, I think that's unanimous. Thank you all. Okay. Good night, all. Good night.